Hi, this is Rami Halmi speaking on behalf of the group of Rana Muhammad, Lamis Muhammad, and Hibatullah Muhammad. This is our Pucha Kucha presentation about gold toxicity. Before sharing any details, I would like to delve into a case, a hypothetical one, that was presented on a TV show. Here it is. On an episode of the hit TV show House MD, a patient presents with a dry throat, anaphylaxis, and a rash. All tests, including a tox screen for heavy metals like lead, mercury, arsenic, and other seven common heavy metals, were made, which all returned a negative result. After an extended run of tests that disproved almost all other diseases with similar symptoms, by its exclusion, the only one that remained was heavy metal toxicity. And since the other 30 metals that weren't tested for it the first included radioactive materials, it was a bit of a deadlock. So let's take a break here. Why didn't Dr. House test for gold poisoning? Was he a bad diagnostician? The fact is he wasn't. Gold is a precious metal. It's precious because it is scarce. It's not easily found in the environment or even in just a your diet. Yet, it's no less toxic than any other heavy metal. Gold in the periodic table holds the symbol AU. It holds the atomic number 79. But in the real world, it holds its place as the first and most precious economic resource all around the world. But wait a second. For thousands of years now, people have worn gold, and we still do. Why don't all of us suffer from gold toxicity? The answer to that would be that gold as a metal in itself is not toxic, and that the toxic form of gold is gold salts. And unfortunately, that gold salts are the pharmaceutical marketed forms of gold. It could be found in gold sodium thiamylate that is used for rheumatoid arthritis and gold dithiocarbamate that is used as anti-cancer. Gold is one of the upcoming bright perspectives in the field of research. For example, gold sodium thiamylate, which was by the way our silent killer in the previous case, is used for rheumatoid arthritis and has proven to be quite effective in decreasing joint lining inflammation with an advantage over other anti-inflammatory drugs as it prevents further joint damage. As for gold dithiocarbamates, they're gaining attention by the day as potential anti-cancer agents, for they have shown great cytotoxic activity with a non cisplatin mechanism, inducing inhibition of tumor growth that reached 80%. A huge advantage indeed, but it comes with a price, as it induces a strong and fast hemolytic effect in comparison to cisplatin, that indicates that intracellular DNA may not be its exclusive target. Well, this picture is not really related to our topic, but it's kind of an inside joke about gold, so Valam Regulis. But we're talking here about gold poisoning symptoms, and it shares some of the general symptoms of heavy metal toxicity. But essential symptoms in gold overexposure, as reported in multiple cases, are skin rashes, bone marrow depression, stomach and intestinal bleeding, headaches, vomiting, myokemia, which is basically continuous vib fine vibrating muscle movement, and jumps. And it's managed by chelation therapy by dimecarbrol, just like heavy metals. So that's it for our Kucha Kucha presentation. I hope you guys had fun. I know I did. See you later. And as the screen goes, there is no word for thank you in Swaki, so thank you and bye-bye.